Hello, we are live today from a different coffee shop than we were last time. It's like the... It's the it's about, about bang. Um, we are live from Frothy Monkey in Franklin, Tennessee. Last it's, time we were in Columbia. It's like a coffee shop tour. We don't really mean it to be, but... No, but when we work together and we have the opportunity to work together, uh, sans kids, we find a coffee shop. And in doing so, yeah. because it's summertime, we're seeing kids, not just teenagers, but also adults walking around with their phones looking for Pokemon. So, yes. Pokemons Again. to build their army. Yes. So, that's a lot of fun, too. Today, we're going to um, talk about a blog that I recently wrote called Three, Three Ways to make prayer matter for our kids. And it's something that we've been struggling with and dealing with um, in various ways. I, I wouldn't say struggling with, uh, I think struggling with in different ways as we talk about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I find, so so I'm just gonna dive in here and just for, for me personally, because the blog discovered, talks about ways that we can pray for and with our kids and make them, make prayer matter for mm -hmm. our kids. And the funny thing was, what you're struggling with in praying with our kids, I'm struggling more in praying for our kids. Yeah, because I don't struggle praying for our kids. I do. Tell me. I really do. Like, I I find, I think I grasp the importance of prayer. I read um, Mark Batterson's book, The Circle Maker, and then he also did Praying Circles Around Your Kids and talked about the importance that prayers never die. So the things we pray for our kids will never die. They will go on beyond us. And I think I've grasped the importance of it. But with that, there's a heaviness. Like there's such a weight to everything we should be praying. Or I feel like we should be praying or need to be praying for our kids, for school and friends and spouses and experiences and calling out, you know, giftings in them and calling and protection and fierce protection over their hearts and minds and... It feels like a lot, I guess. And for me, I'm laying in bed at night with our son in particular. We pray over Kennedy that she goes to bed because mm -hmm. she's still in her crib, and so it's easy to pray over her and then and then leave the room for Landon. He's a little bit older, so I lay in bed with him, and we talk about the day a little bit, and then I pray with him. But I've gotten into a pattern of praying with him laying down, and now he's getting ready to turn four, and there's times where he's interrupting the prayer, and I'm struggling because it's like he, he doesn't understand the reverence of, of prayer and I struggle because I want him to learn that God is accessible as a friend totally but now I'm starting to go okay we're gonna sit because beside our bed at night like changing the way that we pray sitting in mm -hmm. bed at night on our knees yeah. hands folded you know like you see in all the pictures and, and that kind of thing and, and we're gonna and we're gonna pray but we're not gonna interrupt like, we're like maybe we can pray back and forth but there's but a reverence to this exactly it's like teaching them the accessibility of God, there is a friendship available with God, but also that there needs to be a reverence. Yeah, absolutely. And a fear and teach like a, what's a healthy fear of God. Yeah, and who He really is. So we ran into this because our son, our kids, as we teach them to pray at the dinner table, one of the things that they would do is they would love to pray, and and they still do, but they'll say, oh "Pray, pray," and they'll hold their hands out, and we hold hands, but we do it like. 10 to 12 times like, throughout the meal, my food like starts to get cold. I, it goes on forever. Yeah, and then I'm like, okay, buddy, we're, like, we're done praying now. Like, Which is terrible to we've say We've had that. enough prayer. But like, I'm hungry. Yeah, and, and this my needs food's to end. Exactly. Yeah. So, do your devotions in the morning instead of praying forever before a meal. Okay, so, but but anyway, as we just discuss this, take a look at that blog, three ways uh, yeah. to make prayer matter for your kids, things that we're doing. Um, we are praying for our kids and but I would love to know what other people are doing our kids are younger how we start to like move this on because so much of how we pray with our kids also feeds out of our relationship with the Lord and our mm -hmm. prayer life like that's what bleeds out of it and so I'm realizing like I need my prayer life to be connected and growing with the Lord so that they can see that from me so it's not these rote prayers that you continue to pray you know with your kids and and I think the importance the of do, getting rid of the rote is to also teach our kids when prayers are answered and, yeah. and praising God for that and then totally. moving on from that prayer and going, okay, this person's better now. Yeah. Now we're going to move on to somebody else. We're going to do something, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> oh, it, totally. right? Like, and, and, yeah. and so. Well, I so love the cool. one thing you started doing. Do you want to tell them that one? Yeah, so my friend Adam Donier uh, gave me this idea. He started doing it. I miss it. you. I miss you, Donier. Um, 
where we have a prayer journal, a prayer Bible, a journal yeah. Bible, yeah. and I've been reading through front to cover for Landon. I'm going to be starting one for Kennedy as well, and reading just from front to cover, and just as I'm reading that Bible, specifically praying prayers for each child through that Bible, and, and writing then, it in the column, and then writing those prayers in the column, and then when they're older, uh, particularly for our son when he turns 18, or as a rite of passage at some point. Uh, in his manhood, biblical manhood, giving that, helping him to go find it, uh, burying it in the mountain somewhere, allowing him to go do that. So cool. In a way, for him to be able to read the prayers that I prayed for him as his dad yeah. uh, while he was early on in life. And so I think for us, read that blog. Uh, it's on joshuastraub.com. You can also see it there at Facebook. Just scroll down yeah. a few pages. And then um, share with us, comment. What are some ways that, because we're on this journey together. Uh, as parents and we just that's what I want to know I want to know what other people are doing I want to know what a mom like how moms pray for their kids like practically how that looks like I feel like there's hardly space in a day to even find time to pray like where I'm focused not just like praying for like right here right now give me grace give me patience yeah but those prayers count no I know I know, I know. so Let's um, yeah, share with us. Let's let's comment. Let's let's have a dialogue. Let's allow this to be a community where we can just talk about yeah. uh, ways that we can pray for our kids and, and share those and get ideas from each other and encourage one another as parents. Yeah. It's important. Totally. So awesome. Love it. Hey, don't want to keep you guys too long. Uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.